Hello and welcome to another episode of the Road Coach Podcast, the show where I share what I've learned through years of experimentation and research while living on the road to optimize health and well-being so that if you're like me and you live a lot of the time on the road, you can not only survive, but thrive even when you are out of your element. As always, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcasting app, please share it with your friends, leave us a rating so that I can continue to make these shows for you. And check out our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at the road coach podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can visit us on patreon.com slash the road coach podcast. And every little bit helps to continue to make these episodes for you. So today I wanted to talk about protein and protein types absorption in the body and how I choose what I use while I am on the road. And this conversation started with a physician that I'm working with in Calgary. Uh, for those of you who listen to every episode, you know, I'm on a very long road trip right now. I'm currently on, I think, day nine or 10 uh, of a two-week trip, and my days are jammed. I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm at the hospital <clears throat> by 6.30, 6.45. I don't get back till 5.30 or 6. And then there's typically a dinner, and then I got to get back to bed and, uh, and start the day all over again. So there's very little time for myself, even less time for these podcast episodes. So this one's being filmed very late at night, and... Uh, I apologize to those of you who are used to seeing it Tuesday morning because this week you're going to get it Tuesday night. But this conversation that I was having with this physician was he's, he's very interested in optimizing health and nutrition as well. And he's very data driven, as am I. And we were getting into a conversation about how I make my protein shakes and how I pack for the road. And for those of you who listen to this, you'll know what my shake is made of. Um, but I typically use a powder called uh, whole earth and sea protein and greens and i really like it it's made locally in canada in coquitlam bc and uh it is not only a complete protein source um, on vegan based mostly pea protein um but it also contains a full green supplement and uh, mushrooms and it is uh, fermented as well so it is much easier on your digestive system than other plant proteins that can you know make you feel bloated and give you gas and things like that so i really really like this supplement but it's not cheap these days it's about 350 or so a day um, for a scoop and then when i add in my fiber and uh, I have another mushroom um, supplement that I've been using as well, which is essentially a mushroom coffee that I put in it and creatine and potassium and salt and vitamin D, you know, this can get pretty expensive. And then um, I bag up these protein powders in sort of a daily mixture. And then when I'm in my hotel, I just have my shaker cup, my blender cup, and I get skim milk if I can, or 2% milk if I can't and three raw eggs and I mix that up and that is my breakfast or my mid-morning meal most days when I'm on the road and this doctor kind of questioned me as we were talking about it and he said why don't why do you take a protein powder whether it be pea or whey or anything like that he said when you think about it the, the concept of what you're doing you're taking protein to get essential amino acids that then build back up into proteins in your body and, and create the muscle. So the analogy he uses is essentially you're, you're breaking down a high rise building just to get access to the bricks, to build a new building from it. Why don't you just take the bricks themselves? Meaning just take amino acids. And I thought, I honestly can't answer that question and I don't know enough. So hence this episode. So I'm going to start with a little bit of background. This first page that I've got up is uh, from becomeio.com, which is just um, ingredient optimized. It's a website that talks about um, how to optimize your nutrition. And they just have a good explanatory note here about amino acids, <clears throat> the building blocks of protein and how the um, essential amino acids um, are critical that we ingest because they, we cannot make them inside our body. So there's more than just nine amino acids, but the nine essential ones are what are required to, what, to make what we call a complete protein. And uh, those are leucine, isoleucine, valine, tryptophan, lysine, uh, methionine, histidine, phenylalanine, and threonine. 
Uh, and the first three on the list, as they mentioned, are what are called, uh, so those are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. They are branched chain amino acids, and you may have heard the term BCAAs um, because they have a branched side chain in their molecular structure, but they're particularly important for athletes. So many athletes really focus on the first three and make sure that they're getting enough of them, uh, especially in the protein source that they're taking, that they've got enough to make it what's called a complete, quote unquote, complete protein. And they're important for muscle synthesis. Oh my goodness, synthesis. Right? The process of building and repairing muscle for boosting your energy, enhancing your performance, increasing endurance, improving recovery, counteracting cortisol, which is of course our stress horm hormone, and regulating our blood sugar levels. So those nine essential amino acids are the key amino acids to make a complete protein with the first three widely considered the most important. Now, what this doctor was saying to me was that the bioavailability or absorption rates of protein in different sources um, is, it differs essentially because your body breaks down these proteins at protein sources in different ways and uses the amino acids in different ways. And you cannot necessarily get all of the amino acids from the proteins that you're getting because some are lost in the digestive process, some are turned to sugars, et cetera. And uh, taking just straight amino acid, acids make sure that you get them all. And so it got me thinking, you know, in theory, he's right, but I don't know enough about this. So it's time to do some research. So those are, that's your background on amino acids. And then I decided, let's actually look at what studies have been done to see what the bioavailability of different protein sources are. And so this is a, uh, this is an article from Current Opinion on Clinical Nutrition, um, in metabolic care, and it, the title of the article is Determinants of Amino Acid Bioavailability from Ingested Protein in Relation to Gut Health, and it was published in December of 2020. So it's a fairly recent analysis, and it takes into account a bunch of different research that's been done. Um, those of you who listen know that I really enjoy meta-analyses because they take into account a bunch of randomized clinical trials and just lump all the data together. So they're sort of towards the top of the hierarchy of uh, quality of clinical data. And they've got a really nice chart um, in this that basically takes them through the studies that have been done recently and what they found. And they, the studies that they used actually looked at absorbability through the small intestine of the amino acids within the proteins that they were testing. So in the protein source way, uh, they, uh, they looked at um, a couple of different numbers here, but essentially the, the most important one was the percentage of bioavailability for the, the actual protein content. And you absorb about 92% of the protein that you actually take in when you're eating whey. And then the last number there, plus or minus 13, is the standard deviation. So that means that um, one standard deviation of people, so the, the highest arc essentially, when you're moving out from that, the averages are going to range anywhere from most amount of people, the averages are going to range somewhere between, um, what is that, 79 and 100% essentially uh, of absorption, but it really depends on individual bi gut microbiome and digestion capabilities and whether or not you have any compromised um, digestive um, issues and things like that. Uh, but on the average, you can assume that 92% of the way that you ingest is actually being used by your body or broken down and reused to create proteins. Uh, chickpea is another popular form of supplement, but only about 74.5% of that is actually used. Uh, egg is, uh, is very close to whey at around 89.5 with a standard de deviation of plus or minus 4.5. So you're somewhere between 85 and 95, which is really nice percentage of the protein absorbed. Um, any sort of meat, whether that be red meat or chicken or fish, you're again right up with whey, 92 plus or minus 3. And then moving down from there, rice proteins around 100, but they only measured one amino acid, um, methionine. And uh, so that, I mean, you can't, rice isn't a complete protein, first of all, but um, also if they're just mes um, measuring methionine, then you don't know uh, necessarily if you're getting as good of an absorption of some of the other essential amino acids. Uh, moving down to a couple of other things. Um, so you've got uh, pea protein. So that's that's the big one that I take most of the time, and that's around 94 and a half plus or minus 3.5. So it's actually better than a whey, uh, but it's not absorbed quite as fast. It's the fastest of the plant proteins for absorbing, but 
but it is quite bioavailable, essentially. And then you've got some other, you know, whole wheat, brown rice, etc., which don't contain as much protein in general, but you absorb, you know, a significant amount of it. So if you're wondering what the best protein sources are to eat, essentially you're looking at whey, eggs, meat, and um, sunflower isolate and goat whey is high as well, and then pea protein are kind of like your go-tos. So that's kind of, that's, that's why I always lean towards pea protein because it's a, it's a vegan source of protein and the one that I take, not that I'm vegan by any means, I eat a ton of meat, but uh, the fact that it's fermented is just a nice protein source that contains all the green supplements I need as well in one scoop. So that's why I've always done it. And it's, it's relatively close to whey in terms of uh, bioavailability. Now, where it differs though, which I noticed as doing part of this research is the amount of, excuse me, um, the amount that you can absorb in over time. So whey protein actually is absorbed. I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. So you're not, it's not stuck behind my face. Uh, but essentially, whey protein, you can absorb 20 grams per hour of whey protein. Whereas pea protein down here, although you absorb a lot of it, you can only absorb about a quarter to a third of that amount per hour. So if you're taking 20 grams of whey, within an hour you've absorbed it all and used, or 92% of it, based on the amount you absorb. Whereas with pea protein, it takes three or four hours to do the same job. So to, to get that 21 grams of, or 20 grams or whatever of, of protein in pea form, it's going to take you three or four times as long. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about the absorption rate of your protein. And the rate of absorption in raw eggs, for example, is one gram per hour. So I put three raw eggs, which is about 21 grams of protein that literally takes 24 hours to absorb. So um, if you're eating more than three eggs a day, essentially three large eggs, um, it's taking you more than that full day to absorb it all. So really anything more than three eggs, you're not getting, no, not, there's not other reasons to eat eggs, but you're not going to absorb all of the protein uh, from anything more than three eggs in a 24 hour period. So keep that in mind if that is a main source of protein, especially for muscle th synthesis for you. Um, chicken is down there around with pea protein. So again, three to four hours. Beef is much smaller, uh, two to three. Um, whereas <clears throat> fish is up around seven. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about digestion in general and using the protein that you're eating. The fastest way to get your protein is with whey, hands down. Um, so if you're considering you are going vegan um, or whey, the faster it absorbs, the more quickly you can use it. Um, and the more quickly you can then eat more of it and essentially stack your protein throughout the day. Now, that doesn't mean your muscles are going to use all of it necessarily, but um, Definitely something that you should consider when deciding on your protein content. Now, the reason that it takes time to absorb the protein within these protein sources is because you are having to break down the protein into peptides and then into amino acids and then to rebuild them into proteins. So the, um, the alternative that, that this doctor mentioned to me was why not just take essential amino acids? And I thought if I'm going to take essential amino acids, A, there is no real, I mean, absorption is almost immediate, right? Because there's nothing to break down. You're just taking in the amino acids and it's going to build the proteins from it. So how do you figure out A, how much protein you're getting if you're trying to get in a gram of protein per pound of body weight, for example, and B, how often should you take it and how much? Again, interesting concept. So when I'm looking at this, I thought, well, how, do, how would I compare this really? And I, I, I started by comparing it to the amino acid profile. And again, I'm just gonna pull this out so it's easier to see. And I pulled out the amino acid profile of current supplement, which is the whole earth and sea protein and greens. And this is the amino acid profile. So if you're looking at the three most important ones as um, BCAAs or branched chain amino acids. That's leucine, isoleucine, um, 
And where's Valine? And Valine at, uh, are on this list here. This is in alphabetical order. So this is per scoop. This is what I normally take. So leucine it has 926 milligrams, isoleucine 520, and valine 566. Okay. And that's in that's in one scoop, and that's about 21 grams. Where is that? 21 grams of protein in general. Okay. Now, also, we're keeping in mind that this is going to take um, three to four hours to fully absorb in my body, right? When I look at an amino acid powder online. The cheapest one I could find, and I've taken other supplements from this uh, company before, the creatine that I take is from this company. This is All Max. Uh, and I'm just looking at Amazon.ca because I'm in Canada. And so, uh, of course, that's where I'm going to order it from. And this current price is $22 for a 320 gram serving or 320 gram container, which is 30 servings. When I look at the amino acid profile here for leucine, isoleucine, and valine, we're talking 2,554 milligrams. Versus, you'll remember, uh, it was around 926 for leucine in my supplement, 1272 for isoleucine, and mine is 520 or something like that, and then 1272 of valine, and my current supplement in 21 grams of protein is, um, in 21 grams of protein is around 5, I think it was 562, let's say, something like that, or 566. So when you're going down the list here, essentially, this amino acid profile is giving you complete proteins and a significantly higher amount of them by a factor of about 2.5 per scoop. And it's a 10.7 gram scoop versus mine, which is a 32 gram scoop. So there's a couple of key things to note here. One, absorption is almost immediate. Two, I'm getting about two and a half times as much protein by taking this. Three, it is the equivalent of, I don't even know what that is, 67, 68 cents. 68 cents a serving versus $3.50 per serving of my current protein powder. Now, it doesn't contain the mushrooms. It doesn't contain the green supplements. So it's something that I have to add on to that if I want to continue with the same nutritional profile. But I'm getting two and a half times as much protein for, what is that, a fifth of the price? something like that, and it's absorbed immediately. So I'm not waiting three to four hours for it to fully digest and absorb. So this really does seem like a better way to get protein throughout the day. However, if I'm taking, for example, a scoop of this at the equivalent of, let's say, arguably 50 grams of protein, plus I'm taking 21 grams in, my, in the eggs that I'm putting in my shake, and I'm taking in another, call it, 10 to 15 grams in the skim milk that I put in my shake, then I'm, t I'm, 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 I'm putting the equivalent of, um, what is that? What did I just add up to? 80, 80 to 90 grams of protein in a single shake. There's no way my muscles are gonna use all that. So a lot of it's gonna get peed out. Now, some people have issues with, they, they worry that if they take too much protein in that they're going to have kidney problems. That's largely been debunked in a lot of studies now. It doesn't matter if you eat too much protein, you will just pee it out. Um, but are you wasting your money if you're doing this? You could, the way I'm doing it, I could probably get away with half a scoop of this and make it go twice as far um, and spend half as much money and still get more protein from it than I'm currently getting at my current $3.50 spend. So it's an interesting concept. Um, I'm not going to mention any names, but shout out to this doctor who I've been working with. And thank you for turning me on to this. When I'm done my current uh, supply of pea protein uh, supplement, the whole earth and greens, I'm going to try some essential amino acids and see what it does for my performance, um, for my digestion, and see if anything changes. I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked this episode, please share it with your friends and loved ones and let them know that we exist. If you are on the road like me and you are striving to optimize your health when you are away from home, then I hope you are not only surviving, but thriving even when you are out of your element. Until next time.